Hello, hi class, good morning. We're going to discuss today about the database development process. The topic objectives for today's lesson. So after the discussion, you are expected to understand database development process, explain information systems component, and understand the importance of data models. Enterprise modeling. It is the first step in database development in which the scope and the general contents of the organizational database are specified. So it occurs during information system planning for an organization. In this model, it reviews the current systems, analyze the nature of the business areas to be supported, Describe the data need at a very high level of abstraction and plan one or more database development projects. What is an information system architecture or the ISA? It is one uh, part of an overall information system architecture which is known as the blueprint for information system in an organization. It is a conceptual blueprint or a plan that expresses the desired future structure for the information system in an organization. So the information system architecture components consist of the following. We have the data that can be uh, represented at the general level, followed by the processes that manipulates data that can be represented by data flow diagrams. We have the object models with methods or other notations. Next, we have the network. Networks that transport data around the organization, between the organization and the key business partners, which can be a schematic of the network links and topology. Wherein the people um, who perform processes and the sources and receivers of data and information. And then we also have the events and points in time. Uh, when processes are performed, so there are still reasons for each event and rules that govern the processing of data, which can be represented in a textual form, but some diagramming tools such as the decision tables and existing rules can be used. Information engineering. It is a formal top-down methodology which uh, uses a data orientation to create and maintain information system. Meaning, it is a data-oriented methodology that create and maintain the information systems consisting of the steps such as planning, analysis, design, and implementations and then we also have the developing an enterprise model so we have this kind of components the functional breakdown or the decomposition it is a method wherein the study of structures to simplify the problems 
separate focus, and classify the components. So, meaning this is a method of breaking down an organization, uh, the roles, into an increasingly uh, greater levels of detail. So, the enterprise data model is often described the using the entity relationship diagramming. This is also provide a business-oriented definition of what type of organization and a compendium of specific statements and how the company works, which referred to us as the business rules regulating data validity. And then we also have the planning matrices. It promotes the setting of development tools goals and the planning of the development activities and coordination of such activities from the top from a corporate perspective. So this offers a clear method for defining business requirements without needing a clear simulation of the database. How about the system development uh, life cycle known as the SDLC? So SDLC is a project management model that defines the stages which involves in bringing project from inception to completion. The software development teams, for example, deploy a variety of system development life cycle models that include the waterfall, the spiral, and the agile processes. So, the first phase is what we call planning. So, in planning, this is a first step in the process of designing structures. So, it determines whether or not there is a need for a new system to meet the strategic goals of a corporation. It is a preliminary proposal or a feasibility study for the business effort of a corporation to obtain the capital and to expand the infrastructure to alter or enhance the service. So, the aim of this step is to evaluate the complexity of the problem and the solutions to it. At this point, we should consider the capital cost, the time, the benefits, and the other things. Next, we have analysis. Analysis is considered as the functional requirement of the project and solution. So they analyze the needs of the end user to ensure that expectations are met. And then we have the design. This specifies the details of features or specification that satisfy the functional requirements of the proposed system. And the fourth phase is what we call the development. Development ends the initial section of the process, meaning it signifies the start of the production. So the fourth step is where the real work begins, particularly when the main work on the project is carried out by a programmer, network engineer, and a database developer. And next, we have the testing. Testing is the fifth step, which includes system integration and system testing, which performed by specialists in the quality assurance to assess if the design proposed uh, meets the initial set of the business objective. In particular, testing can be replicated to check for defects, glitches, 
and interoperability. So this test is carried out before the end user considered it as appropriate. And then we have the implementation or the sixth stage wherein the bulk of the code is written for the software. So in addition, the actual implementation of the newly developed device is involved in this process. We're in the final phase which considered as the maintenance. Consists of maintenance and the daily updates are necessary. So at this stage uh, is where the end users can uh, fine-tune the device to improve performance add new features or fulfill additional user requirement if they wish. So that is the system development life cycle. So if the business described or decides that a change is required at any phase of the SDLC, then the company may become to continue again Though all the phases of the cycles involved in the SDLC are included. So the approach to the life cycle of every project is a time-consuming process even if some steps are tougher than the others and there is no reason to ignore either. So an oversight could prevent the whole system from running as expected. So we have the enterprise modeling, the conceptual modeling, and then we also have the logical database design. So we have the physical data and definition. We're in this page. It requires a knowledge of the specific database system that will be used to implement the database. In the database application, the designer writes, tests, and install the programs that process the database. And then we also have the database maintenance, which analyzes the database and the database, its application to ensure that evolving information requires are met. You need to fix the errors in the database and the database applications and recover database when it is contaminated. How about the rapid application development? This is a procedure that follows a constantly repeated iterative cycle of evaluating, planning, implementing, uh, before they converge on the program, the consumer needs. So uh, the RAD or the rapid application development approaches functions better when most of the required database structure already exists. And for the system that retrieve uh, data mainly rather than those that fill and revisit data bases. Uh, this is here where prototyping is the one of the most popular RAD methods. And then we have the people involvement in database development. We have the project leader, system analyst, the data analyst, the users, programmers, the database administrator, and other technical expert. So let us proceed with the project leader. Each database development project requires assembling a professional team with the relevant skills which sets to tackle each of the customer's requirement. So the project leader manages the development team which typically the most experience of the developer. He will work closely with the project manager and the business analyst to ensure the smooth delivery of the project. Next, we have the system analyst. 
By analyzing the input and distribution of data and the output of information in order to enhance organizational processes, the system analysts regularly assess how consumers communicate with technology and how organizations work. How about the database analyst? The database analyst, uh, many changes include uh, improved support of the job activities and business functions of users by using computerized information system. So most database analysts will be expected to design and implement a database system once they have worked on the data organization. So they must be up to date on the latest practices and trends in database creation in order to perform these tasks. So um, they may also be fluent in one of the programming languages as well such as the structured query language which is an industry standard. Next, we have the users. The users are the users of the system, or also known as the end user. Then we have the programmer. Programmers are primarily responsible for creating and implementing computer databases. How about the database administrator? The database administrator or the DBA is a skilled administrator of computer system who, by guiding a performing a relevant task to keep the data protected, maintains a successful database environment. A DBA professional's duty is to upload or uphold the data integrity, meaning it implies that the DBA ensure that information is protected from the unauthorized access but is open to authorized users. And then finally, we have the other technical experts which are involved in the database development. So these are the schema architecture of database development. Schema describes the data contents, the structure, and some other aspects of the database, which is also called as the intention of the database um, operating or operation. It is an overall design of the database. If we say external schema, this describes the only part of the entire database of a concern to a user application program, meaning the system may provide many views for the same databases. So this is the views of the managers and other employees or the end users who are the database users. So they have different level of users access. Next we have the conceptual schema which is designed as a process of creating a high level overview of the content of a database which is normal and straightforward for database user. For application that will use the database the method takes as input information, specification, and generates a schema represented in a conceptual modeling notation, such as the Extended Entity Relationship Data Model or the UML Class Diagram. So it describes what data are stored in the databases and what relationship exists among those data and the 
entire database is described in terms of a small number of relatively simple structures. So, it represents the view of the data architect or the data administrator. How about the internal? The internal schema. The internal schema defines the physical storage structure of the database. So, the internal schema is the very low level representation of the entire database. So, it contains multiple occurrences of multiple types of internal records. It describes how data are actually stored in the databases. So, there is also what we call the logical schema. And that logical schema is the representation of the data types of the data management technology. So, it never deals with the physical databases or the physical data devices. Instead, the internal schema views a physical device as a collection of a physical pages. So, example of these are the record structure, the types of fields in the record, and the existence of the primary and the secondary indexes. Next, we have the physical schema. Physical schema pertains to the actual storage of data and its form of uh, storage like files, the indices, etc. So, it defines how the data will be stored in a secondary storage. So, the logical database schema is an schema which defines all the logical constraints that needs to be applied on the data stored. So, it defines table views, the integrity constraints, and more. To summarize the lesson for this morning, so, we have the Information System Architecture or the ISA as a conceptual blueprint or a plan that expresses the desired future structure for the information system in an organization. In the Enterprise Modeling, we have the Functional Breakdown or the Decomposition, which is considered as the classical method used in the study of structures to simplify problems, separate focus, and classify components wherein that this method of breaking down an organization roles into increasingly greater levels of details. In enterprise data model, this provides a business-oriented definition of what organization and the Confidium of a specific statement about how the company works, which referred to us as a business rules regulating data validity. We also have the planning matrices, which includes or promotes the setting of the development uh, goals and planning of development activities and the coordination of such activities from the top from a corporate perspective. And then we also had a RAD, which approaches functions better when most of the required database structures already exist and for system that uh, retrieve data mainly, which rather than for those that fill and revisit the databases. Again, these are the references that you have to read for further studies or further enlightenment of the topic. Thank you and good day.